trust on an LC is the topic and you are in luck today. I invited a special guest to learn about this, David Traster, attorney. I am so excited to have you, David. Thank you very much, Asfirwa. I'm glad to be back and I'm happy to answer any questions that your viewers may have. Absolutely. That's amazing. Thank you. We will learn about can a trust own a LLC? And then we'll go into can a trust own a business because not every business can be an LLC. So let's talk about can a trust own an LLC? The general answer is yes. A trust can own an LLC, a trust can own a business, a, tr a, a, a trust could own a corp. It doesn't really matter. A trust is its own separate legal entity. The best way to think about it is it's just a separate person. So whenever you uh, you form a trust, it's like a birth certificate for the trust. So now the trust is born, it comes into existence, and the trust could own any number of things. The trust could own homes, the trust could own businesses, the trust could own bank accounts, brokerage accounts, anything really you want. And a lot of times that's what people do. They'll place, they want to have everything in one place. So even if they have an LLC, the trust will basically will own LLC. So instead of a person, John Doe owning the LLC, it will be John Doe Living Trust dated whatever date. Uh, that is the owner of the LLC. So let's get into property, for example. So it's understandable and we have some videos about that subject that the audience can look later. But for example, if we take a property and the property has a mortgage on it, can it still be transferred into the trust without making all the refinances? The answer is yes, but to do it 100% properly, you should finance it also have the mortgage in the name of the trust, which might be different than a person owning it because you get different rates for a trust, and you get different rates for an LLC, and you get different rates if it's your primary residence as a person. So that's the only thing. But in reality, yes, the, we do constantly try to transfer properties into trusts via quit claim deeds. So basically it would be the same, we're going to use John, John Doe today as the popular name. So John Doe would sell uh, the property that he owns for $10 to the trust. This way the sale isn't recorded as for uh, comparable sales, because who wants to see something sold for $10? That is a way to keep everything in the family. The seller doesn't pay any transfer tax because there is no tax for transfer of $10 then the property is owned by the trust. The problem that I think you're talking about is that John Doe is still on the mortgage. So as long as John Doe makes the payments or the trust makes the payments for John Doe, there is no problem. The bank is not going to care who sends them the money. They just care about getting the money. But if John Doe stops making payments, then the bank can foreclose on the property and it doesn't matter who owns it because the bank still has that mortgage right to foreclose. That sounds to me like the primary residence or a home that somebody owns in their own personal name. LLC owns a property, whether it's used for rental, whether it's used for short-term rental, how will that work? Can that LLC is it becomes a business now and we'll get to a business in the next question but how does that work is it even possible it is possible so it would be the same thing so if the llc owns the property let's say it's an investment property that the llc just generates rental income from so the llc owns it the llc could sell it to the trust for $10, same way as we were talking with John Doe via quit claim deed. The other option is to keep it in the name of the LLC, but the operating agreement for the LLC, which states who the owners of the LLC are, can be then changed to show that the owners of the LLC is the trust itself. That doesn't get filed anywhere. An LLC operating agreement is an internal company document that just says who the owners of the company are. So the owners just changed. LLCs are sold all the time. 
This is just selling the LLC for nominal value to the trust. Title is not going to change. The mortgage provisions are not going to change. So, yeah, more like um, it's more geared towards a property that's not paid off. Because when the property is paid off, obviously you can do whatever you want. Nobody cares. Nobody is breathing down your neck. But when there is a mortgage, I know a lot of mortgage companies, banks, they have a provision there that you can, once you sell, the mortgage is due. The mortgage is not transferable. Operating agreement may change ownership of the LLC. Everything else stays the same. Correct. It's an internal company document that just changes owners, but everything else stays the same. Everything is still in the name of the LLC. The property is in the name of the LLC. The mortgage is in the name of the LLC. Nothing has changed. Nobody even has to know, or it's just the ownership of the LLC change. But if somebody wants to, if I would want to put my LLC in a trust, I'm not looking to do it just for the heck of it. There's probably some maybe tax benefits or protection that I'm looking for. Is, is that a benefit? Like, is it beneficial to even do a change of ownership into a trust within the operating agreement in the C. So it depends what what the purpose is of doing it. Just to do it, why is my question. Like, why is someone doing it? And what is their goal? Because I get many calls, people, they say, I want to trust. I want to trust. My question is, okay, we can do a trust, but why do you want to trust? And that's where people are like, I don't know, my friends got one, they said it should, I should have it. I heard an infomercial on the radio. They said that I should have a trust. I think this is something that I should have. And then when we start talking, we see that many people don't really need a trust, that many things are accomplished via a regular will, or if we have something, uh, or if there is a reason to do it. I could tell you why somebody might want to do it in terms of moving it to a trust. So one of them is when it comes to long-term Medicaid care, because Medicare, you get due to age, Medicaid, you get due to not having any money as you reach 70, 65 and so forth. But long-term care for Medicaid is a different thing. Long-term care with such as nursing homes or something like that, uh, Medicaid wants you to sell off all, all your assets before you are able to, before Medicaid kicks in their pocket. So then you have this unfortunate situation where elder people who need medical care, who have paid off their house, who want to leave their home to their children, are forced to sell it just to pay for their nursing home care. So there are ways that we could work with that to move because and then even if let's say the house is not in their name and it's in the name of an LLC but they are the owner of the LLC then it's considered LLC is still their asset of that individual so it doesn't really change anything Medicaid still wants you to sell it off but if they put it in a trust if it's a revocable trust then yes, then Medi Medicaid could still ask you to do it because a revocable trust means you could revoke it and you have control of that property. Irrevocable trust is different. You no longer control it, so you can no, so Medicaid not ask you to sell it off. So that's one reason people may want to do it in terms of, the, because LLC still consider it their personal asset if they're the oh. owner. So that's a really good reason to do that then. That's where I was shooting for, I think. <laughs> I mean, it depends, but there's all sorts of things that come along with irrevocable trust that are not just, you get the benefit, but everything's got a for and against. So there are some factors that make irrevocable trust special. The reason why Medicaid can't reach it is because you don't control it anymore. You're not the trustee. You're not in charge of the money. But with that comes a negative is that you're no longer in charge of the property or the money. Somebody else is, whether it's a relative, whether it's a child, parent, somebody, but somebody is, it's not you anymore. So that's the drawback of irrevocable trust. You're no longer the owner and you can't control it. So that brings me to this question. I'm going to play the person an example. So I put my LLC irrevocable trust 
because I don't see the reason to put it in a revocable trust. And now how do I use the money as not being in charge? How does that work? In reality, you have to have a very good relationship with the trustee because it has to be because you can't control it. So you have to have a relationship with the trustees where if you need to use some money, the trustees will give you that money to you. As long as the trustee gives it to me, I have access to this money to spend on whatever my living expenses, my whatever it is that I want, or is it limited to specific things? It depends on the type of trust. There are special needs trusts, which are for certain necessities that you may need. And then there's the generally irrevocable trust where there is no limitations on what you're spending it on. But here, the reality of the situation is that you, sh you technically you're not in charge of this money. And I understand the question, but the legal aspect of it becomes a little blurry because if you're coming and you're just saying, give me the money for this, then, and, the, and it's done all the time, then it's really like you're in charge of. It. So the trust receives income. What can the income be used for? Anything that the trustee determines. You, when the trust is formed, you, the trustee is given certain powers to use the money for. They could, and who the beneficiaries of the trust are. And the trustee's responsibility and obligations are to those beneficiaries. So as long as everything is done in the best interest of the beneficiaries, then everything's okay. Meaning you could go and invest that money thinking that you're going to get more money for the beneficiaries, which would be a very normal reason to do so. But what happens if the money is lost? Now you get into, or you invest it, not every investment pays out. Some investments don't work out. So let's say you invest and then the money is gone or the money decreases in value instead of increasing. Now you open up a potential for the beneficiaries to come and sue you as the trustee and say, hey, this wasn't in the best interest of the trust or the beneficiaries, this investment. We as lawyers, we don't like yes and no question. For everything, we like to say it depends because in reality, that's how the law is. It depends. You could have made a normal business decision and it just didn't pay out. It doesn't mean you try to try to disinherit or decrease the value for the beneficiaries or lessen the value of the trust. You try to do your best. It just didn't work out. So where's the line there between what you did and what you should have done? The money could be used for anything. So uh, by the trustees, not by if it's an irrevocable trust. So here's the difference between the two. The revocable trust, is you as a person, while you're alive, you could change the trust, you could, you could terminate it, you could do whatever you want to it. It's revocable. Once you die, it becomes irrevocable because you're no longer in the picture. The irrevocable trust, once you make it, you're no longer in control of it. The trustees are. So you're out of the picture. So you might ask trustees for some money. They might give it to you, but in reality, they don't That's... have to. Okay, but can I be the trustee? Irrevocable trust? No. In a revocable trust, yes. That's what usually happens, that you're the trustee of your own trust because and it's revocable and you have all the control of the money. But if you don't want, but that's the problem for what we talked about with long-term care and Medicaid, because if Medicaid thinks that you're in control of the money, then go ahead and sell off your house, sell off your IC, give us the money because you're in control. So that's when you're in control, you're the trustee. If you're not in control, then somebody else is the trustee. That's why Medicaid cannot reach that property or that money because you're no longer in control of it. You cannot really take a revocable trust and change it to an irrevocable trust. Each trust is its own separate legal entities. So you, if you want to form a new trust, you could form a new trust and then yes, the five-year look back still applies.
trust is like a business. You can't, you're going to have to get a new FEIN number and all that stuff. Okay, that's understandable. That's, that's correct. Each trust has their own EIN number because each trust has to file taxes at the end of the year as its own separate legal entity. What I wanted to ask is, let's say, again, going back to the LC, let's say the LC has partners and one of the partner or a few of the partners, not all, want to put their share into a trust, whether it's a revocable or irrevocable, doesn't matter or matters. I don't know, you tell us. Yeah. Is it doable or because it's just a share, can they put their share in a trust or they can't? They can, sure, but it depends on what the agreement says and how the transfer works. So let's say you own, I don't know, 25% of, of an LLC and you want to put your 25% in an LLC into a trust. Because you're changing ownership, it's still governed by whatever that initial LLC agreement said. So if the agreement said that you could only transfer ownership back to the company or to one of the other members, then it might be a problem. You have a normal business relationship with your partners and you come to them and you say, hey, can we do an amendment to the operating agreement? I want to put my things in a trust. I have a hard time believing that the partners would object to this, but maybe they would because now that person is no longer the owner, the trust is. So if something happens to the company, they can no longer go after that person. They could only go after that trust and that might create a problem for people so that might be a reason why not a, so okay. it depends <laughs> your favorite answer <laughs> depends let's move on to can a trust own a business like it's not tangible it's whatever it is the real estate is tangible sure but generally people don't run a business in their own name and it would be it's business 101 you don't want to something in your name because if something goes bad wrong you're on the hook and you're potentially liable personally for the business losses so generally people either form a corporation or an LLC and absolutely that could be a trust the question becomes a little bit removed from that right let's say the business wants to rent space office space Will the landlord be okay renting it to a trust versus an individual or an LLC? It's questionable. I think they would be. They would probably still want the, like a natural person to sign a personal guarantee on the, the, on the amount, but I think they would agree to it. But these things are always a consideration of, well, how will that really work out? And, it's not advisable to do business in the name of a trust. What is advisable is to do a business in the name of a corporation or an LLC, and then the trust could either own that corporation or own the LLC. Because if I want to own a business and let's say I'm a flower store, I don't want to call it David Traster Revocable Trust dated April 18th. 2023. That's not a good name. That's not a good name for a flower. Can you do a DBA for a trust? You can, it's a good question. I would believe so, but I would have to check the state governing papers, but I believe so. I could be wrong, but I believe it shouldn't be an issue. From all this information, I'm confused. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> I would like it to be a lot more simpler. Uh, there's nothing we hate more uh, than lawyer as the there's nothing more lawyers hate than law itself because there is no clear answer everything is depends it could be this way it could be the other uh, way interpret the law it's really what it is who is to yeah, inter yeah. interpret they start polluting our brains in law school like i went to law school 20 years ago but my brain has never been the same and that's the way they teach you to think that you have to think about both sides so even in law school exams, there is no really correct answer. When we do our exams, we have to write 
what the one side would say and what's the uh, answer from the other side. Arguing in your mind with the two sides that it could be this, it could be that. The, I think for everyone or most, I think the very common statement that we all get exposed to in the media and online on different social media is the statement of control everything and own nothing. That's why you have LLCs and corporations. To tell you the truth, the trust doesn't provide you that extra layer of protection that people want. I have clients that have, it's an LLC that owns, a, let's say, a property, and that LLC is owned by another LLC. Like a holding? So you, yeah, like a holding company. So let's say you have five properties. You can, the LLC could be a holding company for each one of the LLCs that owns the property. Each property is in the name of a different LLC and there's a big umbrella above them as the ownership. So that could happen. But in terms of putting things in a trust, it's generally done so that it's easier to transfer to your family upon your death. So that, you know, everything is in a trust. You, it's not in your personal name. You don't have to go to court and do probate and do all of the other stuff. You could just do what's regular. You could just you, you could just put it everything in a trust, and because the trust is the umbrella that has all, it has the bank accounts, it has the property, it has everything, and the proper proper uh, the trust doesn't die just because the person died. It just continues as its own separate legal entity, like a company. Steve Jobs died, Apple didn't end. It just continues living uh, as the company. So yeah. that's how. That's why people do the trust, so they don't have to deal with court and the probate. It's not really the scenario of, let me put the LLC into a trust because it creates an additional level of protection. You don't need the trust for that. You could just have another LLC do that if that's what you're concerned with. The trust is done so that everything is tied up neatly in a nice big pile. It's very deceiving because that specific statement is always attached to trust that oh, everything or oh, nothing is that they attach it to to a trust and i think this is the big misconception or misunderstanding in those terms trusts have their let's say you had to go and and you, you want to, you let's say you own a property if and if you die now your family has to go to court has to get admit your will into probate if you had a will. If you didn't have a will, they still have to file papers. It's called interstate, meaning you died without a will. They still have to get papers. An executor has to be appointed. Then the house could be sold off and the executor signs off on that and so forth. We do not, the we don't have, so we generally don't, that's the part that is avoided by putting everything in a trust. You don't have to go to court. You don't have to do that. The trust owns the property. So who, person dies, okay. Whoever is the trustee of that trust now controls the property. We mentioned on a quick note, a holding company. So since we mentioned it, I have a question. What is the role of a holding company besides holding all the different LLCs? And is there a benefit to have it within a holding company. So here's the part that is beneficial. It's the liability aspect. Meaning, okay, if I own a company and that company does something, or let's say I own a company, that company gets into a contract. Now there's a contract dispute and that company gets sued. I'm generally, I generally don't have liability as the owner of that company or anything. There are certain times that that I could be tied in into the lawsuit personally, but I would have had to do something wrong. What does what do you, what does it mean that I did something wrong? I had to run my company basically not as a separate company but as, a, as an extension of myself, meaning I commingled personal funds company funds, then there becomes an argument that the company and me are really the same person. And then 
then I could be brought into the lawsuit because there is no, I shouldn't be afforded the protection that a separate legal entity provides. So the same thing happens as if an LLC doesn't pay wages to people. The courts are very serious about people not being paid wages. So in those cases, the owners of the company can be sued personally because the wages weren't paid. So if if you have a, an LLC as a holding company and then an LLC under it, then the per, then you're still not getting sued. It's the second LLC that gets sued as the owner. It's not you. So that's the benefit of having it removed a couple of times from you personally or people not finding out who you are because corporate records are public information. So if I look up the LLC online, I can't see the operating agreement that who really owns all the shares, but I can see who formed the company and generally will be one of the owners. And that's public information. I could see their address online. So this kind of a process of having LLC within an LLC creates that separation where that's not really done or that absolves you personally of the liability. So a holding company will not have that record online of who formed it and who owns it. Some people go more <laughs> than two. It depends. It depends, right? Oh, it depends gosh. what you... <laughs> There are also companies that hire, there's, for everything, there is a service that provides it, right? If you want to form a company in a certain state, it used to be you have to have a physical office in that state. Now with the power of internet, there's companies you could go and sign up. It's fairly inexpensive, $50 a year, $100 a year. And there are companies that let you use their address so you could incorporate in that state. Same thing for registered agents, who, which is what is indicated on the public records. You could put your own name as a registered agent when you form a company, or you could hire a company and pay them and be able to use them as a registered agent so that your name never appears anywhere. It really depends on what people are comfortable with and what they want to do. It's not extremely clear. I get it. As I'm saying it out loud, I'm like, does that sound even right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but for you guys, we have some more videos for you about trust. And take a look at them. I'll put a list, the playlist for you in the description. We are welcoming your questions. Send them over to keeping it real with the sphere at gmail.com. I will also post it for you. We also have it for you scrolling down right here on the screen but we would appreciate if you ask us in the comments this way everyone else can also benefit from the answers and your questions of course and we will see you on the next video